make the finalists come up to us. We're going to let them rest their legs, and we're going to go down to them. Now, the first award this evening is for Best Specialist Cinematography. Now, that could mean microphotography, underwater camera work, or time-lapse photography. In other words, this is all about those techniques that cameramen go to to get the shots that they want. Let's have a look at some clips from the first two finalists. We now know that lakes like Victoria do indeed smoke, and some of the stories of fishermen choking to death may well be true. But this is a smoke without fire. Its suffocating clouds are countless millions of flies. Weighing in at 15 pounds, the terrapin is three times heavier than the defending emperor. Cichlids didn't get where they are today by giving up their eggs without a fight. And we have those finalists with us here this evening. The cameraman on Lake of the Flies was Martin Dorn. Victoria Stone and Mark Diebel were the producers and camera team on Little Fish. Now, throughout the evening, we're going to be looking at certain films in a little bit more detail. The jury haven't seen these films, and in any case, they made their decisions a couple of days ago. So for our first portrait film, we're going to look at the third finalist in this category of specialist cinematography, and it is The Private Life of Plants. Neil Nightingale produced this particular episode called Travelling, but the series producer was Mike Salisbury. Making this series was somewhat of a gamble because everybody told us plants are really boring. We felt that plants um, possessed all the sort of dynamic behaviour of, of animals, aggression and finding food and all these things, but they do it in a totally different time scale, so we don't normally notice it. It waves its shoots agitatedly from side to side, as if feeling for the best way forward. The technical challenge for the series was to develop uh, time-lapse photography into a, a new realm. Normally it was rather dull, static frames with plants growing, growing up through them, that sort of thing. What we wanted to do was actually m make it much more dynamic, bring whole sequences of time-lapse uh, with close-up shots, moving shots, and so on. And the equipment just didn't exist to do that. The technical setup for each shot is very complicated. There's a tripod, a camera, a computerized control box. There's flash guns, there's a growing light, there's a switching box, there's a roller blind that comes and blocks out the light. Some might be on a tracking system as well. Uh, it's amazing that all these things keep going. Filming outside is a real problem. There's the wind, there's the rain, animals crawling about. It's much easier to bring everything into the studio and you can control all those variables. One of our most ambitious sequences is the Amazon water lily. And we had to recreate the conditions that this would want to grow in, which meant building a huge tank inside a big bubble wrap humidity chamber and then we were filming it for about four months. Its gigantic leaves are armored with spines that protect them against any fish that might try to make a meal of them. We ended up by tracking across the surface of a leaf on a periscope, and during that track, we mixed through to a very similar track that we did out in the Amazon, and I think people were convinced that we were there the whole time. There are many cases where you simply can't bring the plants into the studio. For example, trying to recreate a field of bluebells is nigh on impossible. Uh, and many plants are simply too sensitive to move. And in those instances, the only thing to do is to take the studio out into the field. Mount Kenya, for instance, we had 54 porters carrying our equipment for three days to our camp, where we were time-lapsing the way in which uh, the plants there uh, are adapted to coping with extreme changes in temperature. Temperature has now fallen by as much as 30 degrees. One of the problems we had to overcome there, of course, was that the equipment also had to cope with those extreme changes in temperature. I hope this series has uh, changed people's perception of plants. I hope that they'll actually uh, uh, think of them as, as really interesting, dynamic parts of the natural world.
And the winner of the Specialist Cinematography Award is... Travelling. To collect the award, producer Neil Nightingale. After the private life of plants, Neil took over the BBC's premier wildlife series, The Natural World. He's receiving his award here from jury member Jim Frazier, himself a world-renowned natural history filmmaker.